Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We are here at Jones AT&T Stadium here in Lubbock, Texas, breaking down our 2018 Texas Tech football predictions. And I'm not going to delay any further. We're going to go ahead and jump right on in to the analysis on the Red Raiders. And as you guys know, a couple months ago, I put out a video about coaches I thought were on the hot seat going in to the 2018 season. And pretty high up on that list for me, and I'm sure for a lot of other people as well, is Cliff Kingsbury here at Texas Tech. Over five years with the Red Raiders, he has only gone 30 and 32. So a losing record over five years. He's entering year six with the Red Raiders. And I think this is a major make or break year for Kingsbury and the Red Raiders. He has to get them back to a bowl game. So at least a 6-6 six six mark to keep his job. If they do anything less than that, I think Cliff Kingsbury is out of a job here in Lubbock. And an interesting fact that I found out, from 1993 to 2012, Texas Tech only had one losing season. Since Cliff Kingsbury took over in 2013, they have had three losing seasons. So three losing seasons in the past five years compared to one in 20 years from 1993 to 2012. So things certainly aren't looking up for him, but we're going to see how they do this year. On offense, I'm pretty high on the offense. Cliff Kingsbury, when, as soon as he came into 2013, brought in a high-octane offense, a potent offense that is always very difficult to stop in the Big 12. They have McClain Carter at quarterback, or will it be Jeff Duffy? They have a bit of a quarterback battle going on there. I think it's going to be McClain Carter. Uh, I think a lot of other people do, too. I think he's definitely uh, the better option to replace Nick Shimanek, who has departed. They were, uh, have running back uh, DeLeon Ward and Trey King, and then wide receiver TJ Basher. So the offense with six returning starters is uh, still going to be fine. Even though they have a couple questions at quarterback, a Cliff Kingsbury offense is certainly one that no one wants to uh, face off against in the Big 12. On defense, oddly enough, might be the strength for Texas Tech this year. Texas Tech's defense have struggled, struggled in recent years, especially under Kingsbury, but they return 10 starters. They only lose one guy from last year's team. They have Eli Howard and Broderick Washington on the defensive line. The key player on this defense, though, Dakota Allen at the linebacking position. He's going to be huge and the leader for this Red Raiders defense. Last year, the Texas Tech defense forced 29 turnovers. A stat that you don't hear about very often, uh, that led to be 12. 29 turnovers in 2017. So the defense actually wasn't that bad last year, and I expect that to improve a lot this year and might be the difference maker in some of these close games that they face on the Big 12 schedule. So we're going to jump right on in. They open up the season in a very intriguing matchup, one that's really not getting a lot of attention against Ole Miss and Houston. And this, as I've said in my Ole Miss video, is a bigger game for the Red Raiders than it is for the Rebels. The Rebels, they can't go to a bowl game. They're looking to play spoiler for a lot of teams this year. But Texas Tech, they need to get back to a bowl game if Kingsbury wants to keep his job. And this is one of those games that you don't want to look back at the end of the season and say, man, if we had won that, we would have got bowling. If I had won that, I would have kept my job. Now, I think Texas Tech gets a win here. Expect this game to be a major shootout in Houston. I love Ole Miss's offense with Jordan Tayamu and their wide receivers and DK Metcalf and A.J. Brown. But in a shootout, as it always comes down to, it's the defense. You have these high-octane offenses, but which defense can force the most turnovers or which defense can get the stop late in the game to win? And I think that's going to be Texas Tech. I think they own the edge of the defensive position more so than Ole Miss. Then they come back home. Uh, for a true home game against Lamar, and then I'm going to give them the win over Houston. I know some people uh, think that might be a little shady. I don't know, but Texas Tech went on the road last year, defeated the Cougars 27-24. It was a great game. Uh, the key for Texas Tech, though, is to shut down Ed Oliver, the potential number one overall draft pick uh, next year in the 2019 NFL Draft. They have De'Ara King, a quarterback, a dual threat quarterback, so that's it's going to be a major test for the Texas Tech defense to shut down a very solid dual threat quarterback, much like they have to do with Jordan Tayamu and Ole Miss. And then with five offensive linemen, though, I think they will be able to shut down Ed Oliver for Houston, protect whether it's McClain Carter or Jet Duffy at the quarterback position and get a big time win at home and to start off 3-0. They were halfway to bowl eligibility and things are definitely trending up for Texas Tech. Some people even think that they could be in the top 25 at this point with a 3-0 record. I project their first loss to come on the road here to Oklahoma State. And I know, you know, a lot of people don't expect much out of Oklahoma State this year. Uh, you know, they lost their, their star quarterbacks, they lost Mason Rudolph, they lost James Washington at the wide receiving position. So, you know, a lot of people are a little weary of the Cowboys this year, especially with only 12 returning starters. Uh, they do return Justice Hill at the running back position, so this is going to be a big-time game for Texas Tech to shut down the run game, especially if the passing game isn't like it used to be with Mason Rudolph. But Oklahoma State, still a solid team, still a solid Big 12 competitor. I think they get their first loss here. But rebound and get a huge upset win over a potential top 10 team in West Virginia back at home here at Jones AT&T Stadium. As you all know, I've said this 
since March, February and March, that I am super, super high on this West Virginia team. I love Will Greer at quarterback. I love David Sills at wide receiver. Gary Jennings also at the wide receiving position. The defense also should improve a little bit last year, uh, this year, a couple years ago, and even last year they had about three returning starters. This year they have five returning starters. So West Virginia, a team that could potentially surprise the people in the Big 12 and at the national stage, but I think Texas Tech is going to have a pretty high octane offense. I think they exploit that Mountaineers defense and get a big time home win over West Virginia. And that's going to be huge uh, for Cliff Kingsbury and huge for the Texas Tech team going into an early bye week with a 4 and 1 record. So that's huge. Then they come off the bye week, uh, only five days to prepare for TCU on the road. And a TCU team that loses Kenny Hill uh, at the quarterback position, but they return Darius Anderson and Cabante Turpin uh, at the wide receiving position. The key for TCU this year is going to be, can they break in Sean Robinson at quarterback uh, like they did Kenny Hill? How well does he perform? How well does their offensive line perform? Does Darius Anderson have any time to run? Does Sean uh, Robinson have any time to throw? That's going to be the key. Texas Tech, a very solid defense. TCU, a little weaker on the offensive side of the ball. Defense will be their strength. It's on the road. I think TCU gets a big time win uh, at home. And in Kansas, it is Kansas, but David Beattie being 3 and 33 in his three years uh, with the Jayhawks, I think they improve a little bit this year. They return 19 starters. Now, I'm not saying they're going to go win the Big 12 championship or even make a bowl game, but they'll be a lot more competitive. This game's at Texas Tech, but the Red Raiders have owned Kansas for probably about the past decade, as have most teams in the Big 12. And I think they get another win here against the Jayhawks, and they now have five wins. They're one win away from bowl eligibility. Now, the question is this. Look how difficult the schedule is to close out the year. At Iowa State, always a difficult place to play. Oklahoma, the heavy favorite in the Big 12. Texas, probably the second biggest competitor to the Sooners. At Kansas State, a tough team, and then Baylor and Arlington. So we'll start with Iowa State, a team that I think is going to be very, very tough to play this year. Surprised a lot of people last year going 7-5 in the regular season, winning their bowl game to go 8-5. You get Kyle Kemp back at quarterback. You have David Montgomery at the running back position, and you have to give tons of credit to Matt Campbell and what he has done with this Cyclones team. Last year, Texas Tech actually lost here at Jones AT&T AT Stadium 31-13 to to the Cyclones. Now, I think they're going to go on the road and lose this game to the Cyclones once again. It's going to be two in a row for Iowa State. Certainly not a team anyone's going to want to sleep on this year. They kind of surprised a lot of people last year, weren't expecting much. This year, no one's going to sleep on it, but I don't think Texas Tech's going to have enough to go to the Cyclones. I don't think they're going to have enough to beat the Sooners either. Yes, they lost Baker Mayfield, but Lincoln Riley did a phenomenal job in year one after Bob Stoops stepped down, got him to the college football playoff. They have Kyler Murray at quarterback. At least that's who we think is going to be at quarterback, Kyler Murray there. Also, Texas Tech has lost six straight to the Sooners. So I just don't see, even though it's going to be played at home, them upsetting the Sooners, who, are, like I said, are going to be the heavy favorite in the Big 12. Texas, a team that Texas Tech had to beat last year to get even to a bowl game. They had to go on the road to Texas, won that game 27 to 23. Uh, it was a pretty big upset that got Texas Tech to a bowl game. And of course, they lost that game to South Florida, but at least they got there. I think had they lost that, Cliff Kingsbury would have been out of a job last year. So it definitely saved his job here in Lubbock. I think they are going to lose to Texas, though, even though it is at home. Even though they did beat them last year, this is a Texas team that's going to be much more dangerous uh, than we have seen uh, in recent years. They went 7-6 and six last year, a very solid year. You got Shane, Shane Michelle, you got Sam Ellinger at quarterback. Either one of those is going to be super solid for the Longhorns. They've got solid wide receivers. So, yes, forget what happened last year. Texas is a very, very dangerous team, uh, despite what anyone says. They are going to be very dangerous in the Big 12. Then on the road to Kansas State, give a lot of credit to what Bill Snyder has done there in his entire career with the Wildcats. Uh, last year, Texas Tech lost to the Wildcats 42-35 to here in Lubbock, and that was an overtime game as well. You would think that maybe they could go on the road, get some revenge on the Wildcats, but the Wildcats are a potential sleeper in the Big 12. You've got Alex Delton at the quarterback position. You've got Alex Barnes at the running back position. This is a very solid Kansas State offense that could put up some big-time points. I just don't see Texas Tech being able to go on the road there. It's going to come up to their defense, really, because I expect a lot out of their offense. But I think people have kind of figured out Cliff Kingsbury's offense, I think they get a, uh, a loss here on the road to Kansas State. But close out the year and bowl eligibility with a win over Baylor. Baylor, yes, going 1-11 last year, going to be much more improved this year. Returned 17 starters, 9 on offense, 8 on defense. It was a disastrous year for Matt Rule in his first year with the Bears, but I expect them to trend up, maybe even get to a, to a bowl game in his second year. I love Charlie Brewer, and their defense is going to be extremely strong. This game being played in Arlington at the AT&T Stadium, uh, home of the Dallas Cowboys, uh, as they've done for, for many years now. But it's a season finale. They know what's on the line. Texas Tech does. They know they've got to win this game to potentially keep uh, Cliff Kingsbury in for a job and get back to the postseason. And I think they do that against a Bears team that will improve but isn't quite there yet like we had seen in recent years. So a 6-6 six six year, 
for Texas Tech. That should be enough to keep save Cliff Kingsbury's job. If it's not, he definitely needs to win his bowl game. They're not going to a great one, but they're returning to the postseason for the second straight year, and that is huge for Texas Tech and Cliff Kingsbury. So I cannot wait to see how the Red Raiders perform this year, what they do. If you look at the schedule, I think it's pretty straightforward, the losses that they're going to have. Maybe they can steal one on the road against Oklahoma State. Maybe they can steal one at home against Texas. But other than that, I don't really see any that I could consider toss-up games. It's a brutal schedule for Texas Tech, but they certainly have the team to get back to a bowl game for the second straight year. So as always, please continue to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time on the Gridiron Expert.